In this episode of the On.NET Show, we're going to learn a little bit about how to do change notifications with Microsoft Graph. So stay tuned and check it out. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the On.NET Show. My name is Cecil Phillip, and today I kinda, I'm kind of i a little bit curious about learning some more about the Microsoft Graph and some of the things that we could do to have it integrated a little bit better in our applications. Mm -hmm. So today I have my good friend Vincent, and he's going to come on and talk to us about how we could use webhooks with Microsoft Graph. So Vincent, thank you so much for, for coming on. Thank you for having me. So why don't you really quickly just introduce yourself and let folks know who you are and what exactly you do. Sure. Uh, so I'm a developer in the Microsoft Graph SDK's team. So what we do is that we build and generate the different SDKs in different languages in Java, .NET, and so on and so forth. So developers can talk to Microsoft Graph without having to manually handcraft a request or uh, retry on errors or things like that. Before uh, Joining back on the developer side, I also used to be the program manager for Microsoft Graph Change Notifications, which we will talk about today. And uh, I live in Montreal, Canada. Here's my Twitter handle, and I'm very glad to be on the show. Now, Vincent, whenever I think about Microsoft Graph, I always think about it like it's this database of stuff that I do inside of the world of Microsoft 365. So I think about like the people I'm collaborating with, the documents I'm working on, you know, stuff that's in Excel and PowerPoint and all this types of stuff. But like the graph APIs kind of give me a really interesting way to programmatically interact with that stuff. So I could bring it into applications. I could do, you know, really cool solutions using that information. So I'm curious now about some of the ways that, you know, the team has enabled us to get like change notifications, right? Mm -hmm. I can imagine like, I don't want to be constantly polling Oh, uh, did I update that document? Did I update the document? Did I update the document, right? Like, it'll be great if we could just get notified, oh, hey, something happened and you should pay attention to it, right? Exactly. So as, as you said, uh, Microsoft Graph gives you access to tons and tons of data and services inside of Microsoft 365, including things in Azure Active Directory or things in uh, Office 365 and other services that Microsoft offers. But when you have access to so much data, a need quickly appears that these hey, I want to uh, trigger something in my application based on changes happening in Microsoft Graph. Um, and that can be for a number of different reasons. Uh, one of the popular ones would be to be able to send push notifications to users. So this way you can you know, have something happening in Microsoft Graph, relay that as a push notification to your user so you can engage the end user and ask them, I don't know, to approve something, to reply to something, whatever your application is building. Another uh, a popular pattern is also for data uh, uh, crawling or data, data analysis to make sure that you scan for lost credentials or you train your uh, machine learning model or all those kind of you know crunching data and you need to keep your data set up to date so your model or whatever you're doing behind the scenes is also up to date, right? Another pattern is simply to refresh the UI. Uh, today, we're used to having applications that are lively that refresh the screen or refresh what, what's displayed on, on, on the screen uh, by themselves. We don't need to press F5 anymore. We don't need to uh, do all, other things to, to get the data uh, displayed on our application. So as a developer, as you want to deliver that kind of nice and ironed out experience to your end user, well, you might want to rely on some kind of a trigger or a notification to be able to refresh that UI, right? Those are some of the examples that uh, we can see in terms of need for being notified and, and trigger some application behavior. So as you mentioned earlier, uh, one way you could do that, but you should not do that, is to do some continuous polling. The idea is on the left, you have uh, the user using your application, whatever kind of application you're building, it doesn't matter at this point. And on the right, you have Microsoft Graph and all the Microsoft 365 services. And um, some user using either Microsoft native applications or using some uh, kind of other third party application does something in Microsoft Graph, like sending an email or updating a file and so on and so forth. And uh, you, as a developer, periodically 
um, Paul Microsoft graph, graph to, to ask, hey, do you have something new for me yet? Do you have something new for me yet? Do you have something new for me yet? And you can imagine this is super wasteful, right? Because you are sending tons and tons and tons of requests, most of the time getting an answer that is, no, I don't have anything new. And that generates traffic, that generates load on both ends, and that uh, adds latency to your application. So you want to avoid that. And at some point, Microsoft Graph, to protect itself, will say, hey, you're querying me way too often, and it's going to send uh, a HTTP response that will be 429, too many requests to tell you, slow down or back off. You're querying me way too often, and I, I don't want to handle that kind of load. So this is why you should, as much as you can, avoid continuous polling. It's a bad design pattern for applications in general, and does not scale, and it will impact ne negatively your application. Hence, the change notifications. So the idea of change notifications is that uh, and they have been in Microsoft Graph for years now, the, the basic change notifications, is that you have your same kind of application with your end user on the left, with your application with Microsoft Graph on the right. Um, and the first thing you're going to do is create a subscription to tell Microsoft Graph, hey, if this thing changes, please let me know. I want to be uh, notified if that data change or that data is created or that data is deleted. Let me know and send me uh, some kind of notification. Um, during that creation process, Microsoft Graph will validate the place where you tell it to send the notifications to make sure that we are uh, aligned and talking about the same things. And again, you will have that kind of user uh, performing some kind of update uh, in, in Microsoft 365 services, like sending an email. And let's say that you have subscribed to uh, new emails coming into an inbox to, I don't know, process the emails or do something with that, right? At this point, uh, Microsoft Graph will send you a notification and it will tell you, hey, something has changed. A new email has been created. A new email is available. It is at this place in Microsoft Graph. And your application will have to uh, contact Microsoft ba Graph back and say, all right, I know something has changed. Give me the changes, right? Uh, so this way you can reduce the number of requests that go back and forth because you only send requests when you have been notified by Microsoft Graph, and that saves latency, traffic, and uh, uh, leads to better performances and experience for, for end users. And also, periodically, because those subscriptions, they do expire over time, you need to renew your subscription to tell Microsoft Graph, I am still interested in getting notifications for that kind of change, and so on and so forth. And one of the things I was wondering about as you're showing this diagram just now was, so sure, I could go and I could get information back, but what are some of the different examples of notifications I might get? Like you mentioned email, mm -hmm. which is important, but like what are just one or two other examples, for instance? Uh, sure, we have dozens of different resources that are supported on Microsoft Graph. Uh, resources are different kind of entities, like for example, emails or files and so on and so forth. So we do support emails, as I mentioned. We support OneDrive uh, files, for example, we support security alerts for Intune. We support Teams uh, chat and channel messages. We support Teams presents information in beta, um, and so on and so forth, right? We have uh, more than a dozen resources that are supported today for change notifications. Nice. So that means that if my boss was online, I could always set up a change notification to let me know when she comes online so I could you know, write some code that'll send her emails and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Or you can even react and send uh, automatically a message back saying, hey, hi, how are you doing? And something like that, right? thanks to the other APIs that we have in Microsoft Graph. So, nice. Yeah. Do you have a demo that we could take a look at? Uh, maybe we could see how some of this stuff works. Uh, sure. So um, here you should see Visual Studio. And all the code I'm showing is currently on GitHub. It's available uh, publicly on GitHub. So you can go and try it out yourself and subscribe to different, different things. So um, what, I've did, what I've done with this um, uh, sample prior to our call is I set up a different uh, application registration to have access to Microsoft Graph data. I also set up a different permission. I made sure that um, I set up which resource I want to subscribe to, uh, what kind of change type I'm interested in, and so on and so forth. Right? I did that, all of that before our call, so we're you know we're ready to go. Basically, uh, this is an ASP.NET um, um, web application uh, built on .NET uh, Core. 
Um, so once I've done that and I started debugging my application, if I go to my browser, you will see that once you start the application, it will explain to you a little bit what it's doing. It's telling you, all right, what are change notifications? Uh, how do they work API-wise? Then you can use uh, change notifications in two different contexts, either as app only, representing only the current application, or with user dedicated. So in that context, you represent not only the application that's being used, but also the user that's currently using the application. And you probably uh, uh, can uh, dig a bit more on those concepts on, with the uh, Microsoft Identity Platform uh, resources that are available out there. So in this case, uh, for the sake of demonstrating, I'm just going to uh, use the um, uh, app only context. I'm going to create my subscription. So when I click on this button, what this effectively does, is my application signs in with the Microsoft Identity Platform first, then creates a subscription uh, calling Microsoft Graph to subscribe to a specific Teams channel. Uh, the Microsoft Graph calls back my uh, application to validate the endpoint. And then it sets up a subscription for any new uh, message incoming. So right now, it tells me that my subscription has been created. This sample allows you to watch what kind of notifications are coming in. So you can you know, test it out and, and play with that. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to click here to watch for notifications. So you can see that right now, we haven't received any notification. But if I go over to Teams here in my developer tenant, and I create a new conversation because I subscribe to that specific channel, you'll see that. As soon as I post the message here, right away I get uh, the notification displaying here with a different content from the message and so on and so forth. So if I go to here, let me just just to make it uh, prettier for you, uh, you'll see that um, not only I get the uh, Teams conversation ID, but also get the web URL. So let's imagine I'm sending a push notification thanks to that. Well, I can use that web URL to tell the user to click on that. It will open uh, Teams automatically for you. I also get who has uh, posted the um, message. I get the channel information. I get the content type with uh, the content and so on and so forth. So I get all that useful information for my application to either process or send to a user or do something useful with, right? Nice. Another thing I'm wondering about, so you showed us the subscriptions just now. Are the subscriptions scoped to anything? Or do I just get all of my notifications? Or can I say I only want Teams notifications, or I only want OneDrive notifications? So when you create your uh, subscription, uh, you will uh, always say, I want to subscribe to that specific entity, giving it the URL. If I can go back to Visual Studio, actually. Here you can see that I, I gave it the resource. I said, I want to subscribe in this team with that team ID, in this channel with that channel ID, to the message is here. So my subscription currently will only notify me if a new message is created in that channel or if it's updated, because you also subscribe to a specific change type. A change type can be created, updated, or deleted. And you can subscribe to multiple change types at the same time. If you want to subscribe to multiple resources, like the email on one side and the files on another side and the messages uh, on another side, for example, it all works the same because it's the same feature and it's it, it's built the same way. Just that you need to create multiple subscriptions and renew them periodically uh, using a different uh, resource information here. Got it. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. So then, like you said right here, like I'm just subscribing to messages, but if I had something else, I could have multiple subscriptions, each of those subscriptions particularly attached to a different resource. So mm -hmm. I have my, you know, my Outlook subscription, I have my Team subscription, I have my OneDrive subscription, and then now programmatically I can react to those differently as they start to come in. Exactly. And you can also subscribe to different users and applications on the top right. Nice. So now if I want to set this up, like what exactly do I, I need to do? So you mentioned um you mentioned the identity platform. So I'm guessing I have to create an instance inside of you know the identity platform for me to sign into. Mm -hmm. Right. I'll have to request my graph token, I'm guessing. Yes. And then I'm guessing somewhere in the SDK, there's probably like something that I could call to be like, hey, I want to register for this thing, right? Yes, exactly. So we can uh, show that here actually. Um, I'm using the Microsoft um, 
identity uh, web identity web thank you uh, package to create a context and to authenticate automatically against um uh, the Microsoft Identity Platform and give me a token that's valid for Microsoft Graph. And once um, uh, I have that, I'm using the Microsoft Graph.NET SDK, uh, in this case, because we're you know, building a .NET application, to go and uh, create that, uh, that uh, uh, subscription. So that's the subscription object I was telling you about with a resource, with a change type. All of that comes from the settings I was showing you earlier the expiration date time and so on and so forth and then i do graph service client of subscriptions dot request and then uh, add async and that's all i need to do so once i've done that Microsoft Graph will create that subscription for me and start me notifications as soon as something changes or what i've subscribed for nice and now when you also mentioned to subscriptions sometimes expire and i have to renew Exactly. Do I have to specify an endpoint when the renewal needs to happen? Like, how do I know I need to renew? Like, do I get an exception when I make my next request, or does it send me a notification that I need to renew? Like, how does how does that work? Yes. Yeah, so there is a couple of things. Um, you set the expiration date time. That's capped to three days for some resources, an hour for some other resources. All of that is properly documented. So you could perfectly track that in a database and say, all right, that subscription expires at that date. So very clearly to uh, renew my subscription. There is that. Um, and there's also a feature that's currently in public preview that's called lifecycle notifications. So those are notifications about the state of your subscription to tell you, hey, that's about to expire, or hey, you need to re-authenticate because, because new uh, DLP policy is rolled out, or something like that, right? So, so you don't lose tracks or your subscriptions don't get disabled because of some policy changes in the backend and without you knowing it, right? So this way you get that lifecycle notification and your application can programmatically react to that and recover and maintain the subscription without you know you having to manually uh, uh, do anything at this point, right? Um, and yeah, uh, based on tracking the expiration date time and based on those lifecycle notifications, you should be able to renew your subscriptions at the right moment and make sure that your uh, you don't lose the issues or you don't uh, um, your your subscription does not expire. So Vincent, that was a lot of really good information you shared with us, and I'm really anxious to kind of dive into it and start playing with some of that stuff. Where would you suggest you know some of our viewers go to to learn some more about Graph Microsoft Graph and also learn about um, like these change notifications? Um, sure. So on uh, graph docs.microsoft.com slash graph slash webhooks, uh, you will have access to a full documentation about the different concepts I've talked about and how they are used and the different APIs and how to call them and how to make the SDK, as well as some training and also access to the samples. Uh, that includes this .NET sim sample that I've been demonstrating, but we also have one Java sample, Java Spring, and one Node.js Express sample as well. That does exactly the same thing, but in a different language. So if you are on a different platform, you can effectively you know, learn and just the same, basically. Great. And what we'll do is we'll make sure we add those links in the show notes. So yeah. anyone that's watching the video, they can always you know, click in the description down below and go ahead and check out some of those resources that you're talking about. Exactly. Great. Well, hey, Vincent, thank you so much for coming on, man. It was, it was, it was great to have you. And thank all of you for watching. This has been another episode of the On.Net Show, where we learned about doing change notifications using Microsoft Graph.